آئی ہیڈ ریفر ٹو دی ڈیلوز کمیشن رپورٹ اٹس ٹائٹل از لرننگ دا ٹریزر ود ان وین آئی ہیڈ دس اینڈ سائٹ آن دی ٹائٹل کور آئی امیڈیٹلی تھاٹ آف سوامی وکانند ہی ہیڈ سیٹ ایجوکیشن از مینیفیسٹریشن آف لرننگ آلریڈی ود ان مین پرفیکشن ود ان پرسن ایجوکیشن از مینیفیسٹریشن آف پرفیکشن آلریڈی ود ان مین This is a tremendous global acceptance of this premise of the Swamiji. As teachers, we must understand this and act accordingly. And I will tell it how to do it. We can only assist the learner. We should have full faith and confidence in the learner at every stage, whether it is a child or a grown-up person in university. And there we are assisting, inspiring, motivating. This is what we should be talking about. There is so much more that Swamiji said. But let me in this context also say that Shri Arvindu. And I put three sentences, I pick up three sentences from his premises on his education. The wonderful person, Rishi of the current times, a great philosopher, thinker, who was also a freedom fighter. There are three sentences. One, all of us know. From near to far, what the learner knows, then you move ahead. First, you comprehend where the learner stands. All of us understand this. The second is, mind must be consulted in its development. Yes, you have to have a synchronization of the mental ability of the learner and your own inputs that you are likely to provide, whether they are inspirational or whether they are in terms of information, knowledge, whatever it is. But the third one is most important. He says, nothing can be taught. Nothing can be taught. It can only be learned. It can only be explored, discovered. And if this becomes the part and parcel of our pedagogical initiatives, whether it is online, offline, ODL, or anything, whatever gadgets you use, whatever materials you prepare, Please never forget, nothing can be taught. In fact, I would like some enlightened uh, young person to write a book on this. After studying Shri Arvindo on, nothing can be taught. And let us some teacher come forward and do it. It's a wonderful thing. Then in the end, let me also refer to Gurudev Ravinda Tagore, who gives us the idea how we work and how we function. He says, when a child takes birth, He gets two boons from the Almighty or from the nature. And these boons are power of ideas and power of imagination. As teachers, we are destined to encourage the growing up of these ideas. Imagination must be nurtured. Power of ideas must be nurtured. And from ideas and imagination, Gurudev said, These are consistently being impeded by our systems. And therefore, he went to an open day Shanti Niketan, where in free flow, free flow, free flow is given to the ideas of the learners, young persons who think, who analyze, and who have the capacity to do this. Now, when it comes to ideas and imagination, we understand it in two more terms, and that is curiosity and creativity. Curiosity and must be encouraged. Ideas, imagination, curiosity. And if these three are encouraged, and if we are prepared to encourage them, creativity would follow. It would also be enhanced. And if creativity is enhanced, innovations will be there in huge numbers. And this is the world where you need innovations, you need new knowledge, And we also know this is the century of pace of change, not only of change. Nobody knows what will be the shape of things after one year or two years or three years. If these things are there, you will find out this is your, they are all determining your role. And as you go on, you will find your role is widening. Your whole horizon is widening. And I think that is what we have to do with the young persons. I 
remember how one particular incident in the life of Mahatma Gandhi could help a large number of young persons in widening their horizons. Let me give this example. When Gandhi was thrown out of the railway compartment, he was a young advocate. He had two alternatives. One was to complain against the person who has threatened him and complain against uh, him, get him some punishment, suppose, which is impossible, but suppose he, had got, he has got the punishment. He thought, then so what? I have to broaden my horizons. I will work for the society. I will, will work for all those thousands and thousands who are suffering on the civil lives. He forgot himself and thought of others. And that Mohanda, advocate, young advocate Mohandas Karamchan Gandhi became Mahatma Gandhi. That was the day when his transform, start, transformation started. He had told somebody when asked what was the most creative moment of your life, he said, the most creative moment of my life was Peter Marit's work. When I thought that instead of a smaller goal, my goal should be much bigger. In universities and systems, our goal has to be much bigger. We are not teaching only for a degree. We are not teaching only for marks. We are not teaching only for grades. We are transforming individuals. And by transforming individuals, we are transforming not only individuals, but the future of the country. And therefore, let me read another thing, which I think emphasizes this point. Many of you remember that this used to be displayed on a huge board in the University Grants Commission earlier. And when I was a young person, I saw it. It's a quotation. It says, because I'm addressing the university and college teachers, I read this. A university stands for humanism, for tolerance, for reason, for adventure of ideas, and for the search of truth. These are the fountain heads that determine your role in the new education policy. It stands for the onward march of the human race towards even higher objectives. If the universities discharge their duties adequately, then it is all well with the nation and the people. There can be no greater statement of telling the teachers and the universities their role and responsibility. If universities discharge their duties adequately, then it is all well with the nation and the people. This is a quotation of from Jawaharlal Nehru. This is our objective. If universities are functioning properly, if institutions are functioning properly, up to the expectations of the people, then all is well with the nation. I think this is a great compliment to the systems, universities and other things. He goes on further and tells us, every generation has to fight a new battle for freedom. Otherwise, we go, we go soft and forget the basic values of life and freedom and tend to lose their issues. We have to examine. This is what the national policy tells us. Let us not lose the essence of life. Yes, after industrial revolution, education took a utilitarian shape. Everybody thinks of this and is very right. You must think about it. But essence of life has to be remembered. Now a chance comes to all of us and more especially to the young to test their metal and their patriotism. patriotism. Let this challenge be considered an opportunity and be met with strength, and see these terms, and be met with strength, dignity, discipline, and fortitude, so that out of this trial, a new and better India might be fashioned by efforts and sacrifice of our children. Our young people will be the persons responsible for implementing the issues of this national education policy. Our young teachers and senior teachers will be responsible for inspiring them and motivating them and this is something not only said in the, in the national context, it is an internationally accepted thing. And the Delos Commission begins uh, its whole perception on the following lines. It says the same thing about the challenge. In confronting many challenges that the future holds in store, humankind sees in education an indispensable asset in its attempt to attain the ideals of peace, freedom, and social justice. 
this is our constitution expects from our teachers irrespective of your specialization you are working for achieving the ideals of peace freedom and social justice as it con the commission affirms its belief that education has fundamental role to play in personal and social development the commission does not see education as a miracle cure or a magic formula opening the door to a world in which all ideas will be attained but as one of the principal means available to foster a deeper and more harmonious form of human development and thereby reduce poverty exclusion ignorance oppression and war all of these apply to us all of us now jd tata once said always aim at perfection you will get excellence always aim at perfection you will definitely march on the road to excellence and this is what a teacher who comprehends in new education policy nep 2020 will must do i would be the best i would try the best of the methods i will follow the best of the method whether it is face to face or online or hybrid whatever it is i will generate the best of research papers i will prepare the best of young persons fully equipped and grown up this is what we have to do <coughs> friends these are very inspiring and uh, statements that's a couple of which i have quoted to you but now let me come to a bit of certain other aspects also the national education policy in paragraph 15.2 refers to justice j s verma committee and justice j s verma committee submitted its report in 2012 and this quotation has been reproduced in the policy finalized in 2020 that means a gap of about 8 years now the justice verma committee the former chief justice of india who headed the committee he says a majority of stand alone teacher education institutions i begin from gunnar murlis teacher education institutions over 10000 in number are not even attempting serious teacher education but are essentially selling degrees for a price regularity efforts have not succeeded now imagine if 10000 teacher education institutions have continued for 8 years if not earlier how many teachers we have prepared which are purchasing these degrees is a negative aspect because whatever young persons you get in universities are taught in education uh, in schools and that is what will matter therefore my appeal to the university teachers is please think about school education also now teacher education is a part of higher education in the new policy <coughs> you have to see how schools function how school teachers are prepared you get associates with teacher training institutions and help them in modernizing their curricula in modernizing their pedagogy in understanding the differences that must come in the pedagogy if you are teaching a, uh, in the nursery classes or primary classes or secondary classes or in the university now ugc has established inter university center for teacher education and this is an effort to see that linkages are created between the universities and schools because the quality of higher education is totally dependent upon the quality of school education and therefore we should analyze how can this 10000 uh, teacher education institution get permission and here i have to say something which normally is not said these 10000 teacher education institutions were inspected by a committee consisting of three professors senior academics from different disciplines who went there and said this institution is up to the mark it was not up to the mark and these tendencies we have to remove and these cannot be removed by an order of the government or a statement in the policy they have to be removed by individual efforts collective efforts at institutional level this i think something which we should not ignore we should not uh, just wink away at it we should be serious about it and this something we have to <coughs> one of our most <coughs> well known appreciated philosopher dr radhakrishna he had also something a lot to say about this and one of the statement was intellectual work is 
meant only for the intellectually inclined. Even if we ignore the, dist uh, the distinction between the scholar, the Gani and so much others, which are, the intellectual inclination is something which we all of us have to be following. Because in these times, we have been telling young learners everywhere, you should be ready to learn new things, learning to learn, learning to learn on your own. And all those learnings we have been talking, lifelong learning is the key word that is being stated, new skills, renewal of skills, acquisition of new skills, all these things we have been telling in our lectures. Let me talk to you and let me tell you that it applies more importantly and more dexterously to the teachers. Are we really going ahead? Are we really able to move ahead with times? Many of us who were not ready to touch the computer have learnt it during the corona period. And I think it has been a positive outcome in the difficult conditions when a tough situation was converted into an opportunity. It has to be the thing to come in the future. Every one of us should be ready at whatever age we may be. New skills, new acquisitions must begin from the teachers because we are the icons. We are their icons. Others come later on. Acharyatto is the basic essence of this policy to develop Acharyatto and how to let every Acharya of the university or the college know that he is the Acharya, he is shaping India and he is confident about it. Let me also remember Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who was so very particular about education and other things. <coughs> he has at one stage <coughs> given me one of his lectures which contains a poem by Maulana Rumi. He used to recite it to the teachers, uh, to the students mostly, and also in the gathering of teachers. It is like this. You are born with a potential. You are born with goodness and trust. You are born with ideas and dreams. You are born with greatness. You are born with wings. You are not meant for crawling, so don't. You have wings, learn to use them and fly. This is what he used to tell all of us. And this is what I find applicable not only to a young child, but to anybody at any age. It inspires me also. Yes, I can do something. It must inspire every young teacher in the university, every young person, everywhere. Friends, let me wind up by saying that yes, we have to learn to live together, to progress together, to work together, to investigate together, to innovate together. We are all born in love. Hatred is not a human trait. It must not be learned in any way, anywhere. Let the love flourish. Let truth, peace, non-violence, love and righteous conduct flourish everywhere. These are the values acceptable universally and these must flourish in universities and colleges. Thank you very much.